Hello everyone, and welcome back to another cartography lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to add some terminology and a couple of more things that we can do to develop global services besides just changing the way that we wrap them. But first, I want to add a term. So we've talked about developable surfaces up to this point is this idea that we can have a cone, a cylinder, or a plane. And we couch that idea of conic, cylindrical, or planar with this term called class. So we'll call this map projection descriptive terms. And you can think of these map projection descriptive terms as the three things that you will always have to tell someone when you're talking about a map projection. And so the first thing that we need to make sure that we tell people is what we talked about previously, whether it's conic, cylindrical, or planar. And we call that term class. All right, so the class of the map projection is the shape. Right, and that's that conic, cylindrical, or planar that we talked about before. So that's one thing that we can do to the developable surface that will affect the way that the reference globe is drawn. But there's something, there's two other things that we can do. The second thing that we can do is we can actually change the orientation. And we call the orientation, when we start messing with orientation, we call that the aspect. Right, the aspect is the orientation of the developable surface relative to the reference globe. All right, let me repeat that. The aspect is the orientation of the developable surface relative to the reference globe. I think this might be a little bit easier to see visually. And so what I want to do is I want to give you three. Again, we're going to have some circles here. So we have these three circles. Two and three. So I like to use con I like to use the um, conic projection for these examples. So the one that we've talked about so far sort of is the is the way that you would most likely think about it, of having the map projection line up north-south, right? If we were to draw a line, right, the major axis here is north-south. When we have this, we call this the equatorial aspect. Right, but you can imagine, right, that's not the only way Right, this isn't the only way that we could take this shape and place it on our reference globe. Right, what if instead we took the, the shape and we tilted it 90 degrees? So instead of having it run along the north-south axis, right, we have it run along the east-west axis. So instead it would look something like, like this. where right, now it's running along the east-west axis. Right, when we rotate it 90 degrees like that, this is called the transverse aspect.
And so you can imagine that we could have anything in between these two, right? We could have it sort of sitting off at, at an angle like that. Right, so it's not transverse and it's not equatorial. Oftentimes this gets called oblique. And you can imagine how oblique might be really useful if you have a country that's sort of at a weird angle. Right, equatorial would be really good if you're, the thing that you're trying to map is wider than it is long. Right, for example, the United States you would want to use an equatorial projection. But for example, say South America, which is longer than it is wide, you might want to use a transverse aspect. And if you have something kind of in the middle, you might want to use an oblique aspect. So again, aspect is just this idea of orientation, right? How did we rotate or tilt that developable surface relative to the reference globe? Is it at a 90 degree north-south? Is it at a 90 degree east-west, or is it at some other angle in between? So that's aspect. That's the orientation. Let me delete that really quick. And let's talk about the third key term here. And that is called case. And case is particularly important because case has to do with the relationship between the interaction with the reference globe and the developable surface. And sort of to put it more simply, it's how and where does the reference globe intersect the developable surface. Okay. And so what I want to do here is I want to draw another set of diagrams for you. And I want you to think for a second about what it means when I say intersects the developable surface. Okay, so we've got two we have two reference globes. Okay. Now I'm gonna try and be careful how I draw this. Right. So what I want to do here is I want to highlight the fact that if I did this properly, right, the reference globe would be touching the developable surface along this red line. All right. So you can see here in, the, in this picture, it's kind of hard to tell, but the way I've drawn it, right, this developable surface is touching the reference globe on the edges here and here, and because this is in three dimensions, it would be everywhere along this circle. All right, but that's not the only way we could have done that. We also could have done it something like this. All right, you could imagine in this case, right, the reference globe, the developable surface is now sort of cutting through the reference globe. And so now it's actually doing, it's actually intersecting in two circles. One here. My drawing skills are particularly bad, but, and one there, right? So you can see the difference here. 
the way that we've set up this developable surface, whether it only has one intersection circle or two intersection circles, right? If it only touches, if it only touches the reference globe once, this is called the tangent case. Versus in this case, right, we have two different places where it touches the reference globe. We call this the secant case. Touches the reference globe twice. So what I want to do is I actually want to end this video here, and in the next video I want to explain why aspect and case, so again, this is case, the idea that we can have it touch either once or once one line, or we can have it touch twice or two lines, why this is important, and why along with aspect we can tweak where these lines are and why that's so important. So hopefully just understanding this idea that we can sort of have the developable surface match the Earth so it touches once, or how we can constrict it so that it touches twice. And hopefully that makes sense. And as always, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.